in the heart of the deep ocean, an unimaginable battle with the 75-foot megalodon begins. Jason Statham, returning shark hunter and defender of the ocean, embarks on a daring mission with his team. They must withstand sharp teeth and lizard-like land life and try to survive this multitude of threats. It is an exciting journey full of action, adventure, and endurance against the horrors of the deep water that is depicted in the spectacular world of cinema. Meg 2. The trench met with an exciting opening from the critics, with an attractive horror and cruelty, but this film was ranked worse than the original version. In the exciting world of cinema, a top name for directing action and thrillers, Ben Wheatley, sits in the director's chair for the film Mag 2, The Trench, his gritty and dark experiences in making films such as Below the Terrace, Kill List, and Free Fire make him a suitable and surprising choice to create a villainous experience in. The world of Killer Shark Dodd in this movie, Ben Whitley has a special take on killer sharks, as if, in his opinion, these creatures are more evil and scary than ever. This eye-opening interpretation of the subject adds to the experience of watching the film and allows for fresh and breathtaking novelties in the story. Jason Statham, the handsome and intelligent actor who plays the role of Jonas Taylor in this film, is looking for improvements compared to the first part of the film. With a team of underwater researchers, he discovers the hidden heart of a deep pit, where three terrifying megalodons have found their place. But the story does not end here. They encounter the discovery of another prehistoric creature that brutally threatens all life on the water's surface. In this movie, Ben Whitley has a special take on killer sharks, as if, in his opinion, these creatures are more evil and scary than ever. This eye-opening interpretation of the subject adds to the experience of watching the film and allows for fresh and breathtaking novelties in the story. Jason Statham, the handsome and intelligent actor who plays the role of Jonas Taylor in this film, is looking for improvements compared to the first part of the film. With a team of underwater researchers, he discovers the hidden heart of a deep pit, where three terrifying megalodons have found their place. But the story does not end here. They encounter the discovery of another prehistoric creature that brutally threatens all life on the water's surface. But was this initial focus just a deceptive approach to gaining attention? The trailer seems like it wants to take the audience on a fun ride in three exciting minutes. But in reality, the experience is much more complex and varied in the full movie. You might expect to hear more jokes and see bigger beasts by the end of the movie. But unfortunately, this hope is not realized during the film's 113 long minutes. The trailer kind of promises the audience things that aren't quite there in the movie, and that might leave you feeling disappointed. Despite this, Mag 2, The Trench will still offer the audience an adventure full of excitement and charm. Although the trailer invites the audience to an experience superior to reality, the special charm of the film and its innovative efforts in creating a world full of secrets and mysteries should not be overlooked. Mag 2 seems to be similar to the first movie, but more chaotic. The film generally has a lot of humorous jokes that fit its genre but the action and well-timed explosions inevitably end up being rushed and absurd rather than exciting. The main adventures are not based on human connections, instead emphasizing the events and horror elements in the film. Wheatley is trying to work with the same formula as the first film by designing comic tragedies, dialogues like we must stand, turn, and fight. There are examples of this attempt that clearly do not contribute to the complexity and readability. Why of the story? The characters' relationships and their impact on the story are a bit weaker than expected, and this ultimately adds to the film's problems. Some characters have new roles in the story, but their new tragedies may be mixed and affect the overall feel of the film. This transition from a scary and exciting environment to only focusing on action in parts of the film weakens the viewing experience, and it seems that the achievements of a genre such as dark comedy and thriller are lost. Ben Whitley's filmmaking, although significantly different in his work, is here an attempt to conform to the previous formula, and the irregularity in some aspects can damage the viewing experience beautifully. In the world of filmmaking, always looking for interesting and special experiences when watching new works creates a challenge. Beyond our imagination, among these works, Magda takes us into a world of action, war, and complicated relationships in a surprising and ambiguous way. In this cinematic adventure, we meet two attractive characters named Meng and Jonas. Two characters who are different in every possible way. From their writing style to their life choices their apparent contradictions sometimes create a curtain of mystery for us, and sometimes the incredible arms of their actions sing to us. Along the way, 
We travel from the shores of Fun Island to times full of tension and action. The different settings of the film are such that the audience is in the middle of exciting moments. Although improvements in direction and changes in the film have increased its appeal, there are also criticisms. Some criticisms refer to the repetition of some situations and the lack of innovative ideas. These criticisms point in a futuristic way at the filmmakers, leaving us wondering if we're watching a masterpiece or pointless garbage. Deadline critic Todd McCarthy clearly pointed out that the film loses the audience's interest very quickly and begins with boring and repetitive jokes. He also criticized the film's writers for neglecting proper characterization for the supporting cast and not focusing on rounding out the cast. The film seems to develop and improve on various aspects of the previous version, but gradually. It becomes clear that the main goals of the creators are to create a more profitable franchise. The producers and the production team of the film have failed a little in attracting suitable, supporting actors to increase their cast from there. This may have a negative impact on viewer engagement and experience. In a world full of explosions and heavy action, the ending of Juvenile seems forced to show itself attractive. Now imagine how you can throw a jet ski with the character of Jason Statham towards giant sharks. It's also a weird story that loses all its appeal through Wheatley's dark humor and horror elements. In the end, the movie comes to a good and interesting ending, but it feels like it needs to revive itself a little. Maybe it's because no effort was made to pay attention to the details and the characters are not portrayed well. By the end of the film, it feels like the characters are just following orders, which diminishes their impact.